Hi there everyone, welcome back. And today I have a Nintendo 64 that I purchased a couple of months ago from a yard sale. I think I paid like 20 bucks and it's the Nintendo, the actual console itself, three controllers and the uh, power supply. And all that was only 20 bucks. So I tested it before, I put it away a couple of months ago and everything seemed to work okay. The controllers are working perfectly. Turns on, turns off. So no major problems except that it's really dirty. Someone must have dropped it in mud or I don't know what the heck it was, but as you can see here, it's full of dried up mud. The cords are full of it, the controllers are, and so is the unit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and clean it up and bring it back to its original glory. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy. Some brat must have put something in here because uh, there's something rattling inside. Uh, it could be a coin or a screw or who knows what. But we'll find out what's in there once we start taking it apart. And I'll start by breaking it down, cleaning it up, putting it back together, and testing it. So in the meantime, enjoy some chill lo-fi music from uh, Purple Cat. And I'll link his Bandcamp page on the description below. If you guys like the music, give him a visit and uh, enjoy. Let's go ahead and take the shielding off to see if there's anything wrong with the board. There shouldn't be anything wrong with it, but just in case. So let's do that and double check.
everything looks good. So next I'm going to use some contact cleaner to clean out the contacts on the on and off switch and the reset button. The upper shield has some type of oil. It seems to be um, some type of thermal oil because it's right above the heat sinks and the heat sinks have it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off and add some thermal paste here in a minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add that thermal paste onto the uh, heat sinks. In hindsight, I should have actually taken off the heat sinks and added it onto the uh, actual chips, but I don't know. Everything looked really good in there. I didn't want to mess with it too much. So we'll add it on top of the uh, heat sinks and uh, that should help with any heat dissipation, which in actuality, I really doubt there's any, any type of heat since there's no fans in here. But just in case, you know, better safe than sorry. So I went ahead and put it on and we should be good now.
now it's time to clean up all the mud and whatever this is. Um, I'll be using all-purpose cleaner and a few other um, tricks to make it look good again. Stay tuned. So next I'm going to be removing this scuff using a magic eraser and for those who do not know what a magic eraser is, it's a sponge that is abrasive but it's not too abrasive to where it's going to do any type of major damage but it sure does wonders man, no wonder it's called a magic eraser. So you'll see me use it here and there and um, yeah, definitely a game changer.
Okay, so next I'm going to use Back to Black to bring back the luster on the uh, on the console here. This is used on cars to uh, restore and revitalize the uh, plastic on your car. It's kind of like armor all, but a hundred times better, and it really it really does its job. So as you can see here, and you'll see here in the controllers and a few other items that it really brings back its its color. So definitely add this to your cleaning arsenal. It kicks ass. Now it's time to clean the controllers and I'm not going to take them apart, I'm just going to clean them up, remove the uh, dried up mud and any scuffs. The reason why I'm not going to take them apart is because I already tested them when I first purchased the unit and everything worked okay and why take something apart if it's working? You know there's always a chance of you screwing something up or breaking something and then you're going to kick yourself so I'm just going to clean them and that's it.
Now the plug in this controller has a, um, a very rough scratch on it or scratches. It looks like it might have gotten dragged or got caught on something. So I'm going to go ahead and use a file to uh, sand it down a bit and try to smooth it out. I'll start with a with a, um, a rougher grit and then uh, switch over to a finer grit to smooth it out and make it look a little better. And for the most part, it looks it looks a lot better as you'll see here.
So that concludes the restoration of this Nintendo 64. And as you can see, I think it looks really, really good. Uh, now all we have to do is test it to make sure it boots up and it reads the game, which it should. And it does. And the controllers also work because I had, I had already tested them when I first purchased the unit. So we know those work. Yeah, this was fun to do. It, I know it's been a while since I've last uploaded a video, but I've been very busy and I only have time here and there to kind of play around with these uh, consoles and other stuff. But I've got, uh, I don't know, uh, I've got a couple of tubs full of controllers and, and PS2s and all kinds of stuff that I'll be working on here soon. So hopefully you'll come back for that. But as you can see, the controller works. Uh, I'm able to scroll through the settings. So we're good. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. So stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care.